All right, it's getting cold, team, so I need to get my cute little slippers on, I need to get my puffer on, and I need to get my reptiles prepped for winter. It's autumn here in Canterbury, so let's get everyone sorted. It's now autumn in the South Island of New Zealand where I live, and it's getting cold, but it's a stunning time of the year nonetheless. Now if you have reptiles and amphibians, whether you're in the northern or southern hemisphere, you know at this period of time, things start to slow down. Now to define hibernation from a simplistic perspective, well basically the reptiles go into a long deep sleep for either a few weeks or a few months, but depending where you are in the world, you can actually influence this yourself, especially if you have them indoors and with temperature settings, but otherwise outdoors it happens naturally. In this video, I'm going to show you how I prepare my reptiles and amphibians for these colder months and give you an insight into my amazing pets. These are the key areas that I think about when I put my animals down. Understanding hibernation, the preparation, all the visual health checks before they go down, any other safety measures I need to do, the transition period, and then the final preparations. And obviously monitoring during hibernation and when they finally wake up. All right, let's collect some leaves. Alright, so these are Cunningham skinks. They're an Australian skink species, but they're exotic pets here in New Zealand. Now the plan for these guys is I need to get them out and make sure that they're healthy. It's getting colder, they're starting to show a bit more behavior of wanting to go away and hide, but I still need to keep them awake for another couple of weeks and fatten them up. And I've come to this conclusion because as I've gotten them out, I've noticed that the female is a lot skinnier than the male. See the male on the left or the top? He's nice and plump. Whereas the female could use some more fattening up, which means a couple more weeks of good diet, so lots of insects, lots of supplements then give them a cool down period so they can digest their food and then they're ready for a good solid hibernation. But the point here is that you don't want to put or let a skinny animal go into hibernation. They don't have enough fat store reserves. Basically, they don't have enough fat on their body to, to survive that whole period of time. Especially, they're going to be dehydrated. So my primary focus for the next two weeks for these two is lots of food, lots of water, get them nice and plump so that they're ready to go. My native geckos get a similar treatment. What I do with the outdoor enclosure and the indoor enclosures is I give them lots and lots of leaf litter. Now on the super super cold days it gets to the minuses down in here in Canterbury. The idea for this is so that they can actually bury into the leaf litter, into the soil, go into their hides. They have lots and lots of places to get away from that harsh weather. That's the whole purpose of it. Now in the meantime I'm plumping them up. I'm giving them lots and lots of food. Houseflies, crickets, locusts, mealworms, anything I can. Now it can be nerve-wracking the first time your animals go into hibernation, especially if you have exotic species like tortoises or other exotic animals. You see with native geckos they generally are active during winter as well so I don't have to worry about them too much. But with my Cunningham skinks and my Greek tortoise, they go down and the first time I did it, I'm not gonna lie, I, I was scared because I'm thinking well are they gonna die during hibernation, are they gonna wake up? But as long as you do your research, make sure you give them enough food prior, make sure that they have that transition period of no food right before they go down so the food doesn't rot in their stomachs, you'll generally be okay. This is nature and this is normal for them. So just keep that in mind. For my animals that don't go into hibernation, like my whistling tree frogs that are naturalized in this part of the world, my leopard geckos, some of my native geckos, I have to make sure that I have food for them during this winter period. Now I normally catch wild bugs, flies, moths for the native geckos as well as my whistling tree frogs, but during winter there's like nothing around apart from some moths, 
So I have to make sure that I have mealworms, I make sure I have to have crickets, locusts, make sure that they're warm so they don't die out. And also my isopod cultures are crucial during this time. So my visual health checks are the same for all my animals. I make sure that they're nice and plump, they look fed, they look like they're ready to go, they look nice and healthy. And that's a key step before they go into hibernation. One of the things that I'm asked the most is, when do you wake them up? That's a great question. Basically, when you start to see sign of movement. So if you keep your animals outside, that's easy. You'll see them. You'll see them pop up in the warmer days of spring or towards the back end of winter when it starts to get warmer, you'll generally see activity. Some people dig up their tortoises if they're living outside. Some people dig up their animals. If you keep your animals inside and you're doing a unnatural brumation or hibernation, what I mean by that is, is that you're just influencing the temperature of the room so that they go to a hibernation but it's actually not cold outside because you live in a certain part of the world, well then generally it's just a safe bet of a few weeks is generally enough. A nice soft brumation, maybe three to four weeks, maybe up to six weeks, depending on experience, and then you go from there. But I must stress, please do your research. I'm learning just like you are. Some species need to hibernate every single year. For example, the tortoise. It's a natural part of their life cycle. It's unnatural for them to not hibernate every year. So my Greek tortoise goes through hibernation every winter and it comes out of it like a little spring chicken. You don't have to hibernate every species, but make sure, once again, I'll put emphasis on it, do your research. And one final note before I put my animals down for the season. Hibernation is also key for breeding. So if you do want to breed your animals, doesn't matter what part of the world you are, what species you have, generally hibernation or brumation is a key part of the breeding process. So I hope you enjoyed this one. This was my little spiel about my experience with hibernation, what I do, and my preparation for this autumn and this winter. It's not rocket science, I'm not a thought leader. Like I said, I'm learning, and I try to do what's best for my animals. But I've got some dope content coming this winter, and I hope you guys are here for it. It's gonna be different, it's still gonna capture a lot of amazing animals, and I hope you guys are enjoying my channel. Stay tuned for the next one.